What is up, tennis enthusiast? Today's video, ATP Tour tennis player Jack Sock forehand analysis. We're gonna take a look at the huge forehand from Jack Sock and some things he does that are unique and some things that despite how unique his forehand is, he still has to obey the laws of physics. He does things very similar to every other player on tour. So let's take a look. So before we get on to some technical aspect of Jack Sock's forehand, um, I was very fortunate to get the footage you're gonna see in this video very recently at a, at a challenger tournament that he played here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I know he's taken some, uh, some time away from tennis and now we see him quickly rising back up in the ranks with some good wins. Uh, watching him, being close to Jack Sock, watching him walk out on court, watching him warm up and start to play his match, one word comes to mind swag. Jack Sock has talent oozing from his pores. He's relaxed, he's confident, not even cocky. He's just loose, he's out there having fun, and that really struck me um, when I think about the things we're going to talk about in the video, how unique his forehand is. Certainly, there's lots of factors in determining how good you're going to be. I think of the opposite of Jack Sock, I would think of Tsitsipas where to me his shoulders are always a little high, his eyes are big, he's always very tense and kind of maybe trying a little too hard. The opposite of him, and also with Tsitsipas, his game has been put together, developed extremely well. Jack Sock, I would, it would have to be very late in the player's development for me not to change that grip, not to change the way, play, the way they play tennis. And I'll always argue, as good as Jack Sock is, we always have to ask ourselves, could he have been better? So first let's go over his grip. It's definitely on an extreme western grip. Not a grip that I would recommend to people and definitely a grip that if a player wasn't too late in their development, I would definitely try to get him a little further away. But again, it's hard to argue with Jack Sock's forehand. He just does it so well. We'll see in the video, the western, strong western grip definitely tucks the arm in more, really prevents you from extending out as much as you'd like. Um, his grip so far, in fact, that I'll definitely notice, he does go the reverse way to change his grip for his backhand. So where typically we teach people to turn the racket, the palms down, he actually goes this way to hit a backhand. And on that note, by the way, Jack Sock's backhand isn't bad. His forehand's amazing, but he has a pretty good backhand. He just doesn't want to hit it. He likes to get around it and hit that big forehand. But then the other thing about his forehand, that grip is, when you see that extreme windshield wiper motion, don't think that that's creating topspin. Again, that's just anatomically very hard to extend out with that strong western grip. So he just lets his arm flip over to relieve stress from his arm and also to keep that racket face in position. Remember, topspin always comes from what happens immediately before contact to contact, not after contact. Okay, so now I'm gonna have some fun. I'm gonna try to emulate Jack Sock's forehand myself. Obviously, I'm not gonna get the same result. I think Jack Sock has more talent in his pinky um, than I have in my entire body, but I can still try to use the grip and try to use some of the fundamentals that he uses um, and when I was doing it, what I noticed was that we're on a more conservative Eastern type grip. You feel tension and pre-stretch more in your forearm and your arm. I noticed with a strong Western grip, you can still pre-stretch and get some loading with your muscles, but it moves the tension up your arm into your shoulder and even the top of your chest when you pre-stretch. Um, I don't know what the implications of that are other than hopefully uh, you won't put any injury in that joint in your shoulder. but. Jack Sox seems to be doing fine with it to me. So as unorthodox as Jack Sox's grip is, it's important to note, he still has to obey the laws of physics. There's still things that all pros do that he does um, that you just can't get around. Uh, starting with his unit turn, he prepares with his racket high. Um, we see a lot of pros do that. And I certainly get in some debate sometimes on whether the stroke is two parts, whether you should define this unit turn or whether it should be all fluid. And different pros have different aspects, but I think all pros are in front of the rhythm. You see at least a slowing down in this area. You don't see the swing gradually picking up speed through the whole motion. And Jack Sock has a pretty well-defined unit turn, a two-part unit turn, where you see a pause here, he's waiting, he's waiting, and then he swings the ball. And I like that, because that puts him in front of the rhythm. That allows him to dictate, dictate play, 
Go after the ball earlier, just execute a swing early, it just takes less time. Uh, the other thing he does that you cannot deny is he's below the ball, the hooded racket face, and he's swinging inside out. He's creating a vertical racket face at contact. That's what you need to create effective topspin in tennis, and that's what Jack Sock does as well. So there's some thoughts on Jack Sock's forehand. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Uh, unorthodox grip, but does a lot of things well, and a very talented individual. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Did my, did my forehand look anything like Jack Sox? Maybe? Not? No? Not at all? Well, I'll see you next time. Guess that'll have to do.